have another quick, easy project. This is a little bottle that I picked up at the thrift store. Uh, Herba, it says Urbana something milk company. And I didn't have any painter's tape, so I just had to use a scotch tape. And I hope I, I couldn't really see it, but I hope it's on straight all the way around. I'm gonna give it one coat and let it dry real well. That way it won't scratch off. And I give it the second coat. And I'll give it two coats and then I think I'm gonna stamp it. It should be a simple, easy project. All right, I'm gonna continue on and give it two coats and then I'll be back. Okay, on my milk bottle, I was, I had a one of the um, crockery stamps and it had like cl clotted cream on it or something. And that's what I was gonna get use and that would have been very simple, but I'm not at the store now and I left it at the store and I won't be there for a couple of days and I need to finish that. So I did go on Etsy and, uh, well, I'll just go on. Anyways, I bought some fi a file off of there and I'm going to bring that into my Silhouette software. I'm going to just pull this one off. And I'm going to have to resize them. But first I've got to break these all apart. Because they're on one sheet. So I'm going to uh, go over here. I've got to remember what I'm doing. Let's see. What is it I'm going to do? Even I have, have to remember. Trace panel? Yeah, I need to do the trace. So I'll select trace. And then I'll highlight all these labels and then I'm going to go over here right in here to the threshold and pull it all the way up and then I'm going to trace and go here and hit trace and detach and now I'll pull the white off and I have each individual label now I have to pick which the one I want um, they're all cute. Probably this one right here. This one right here. Let's see if I can get it by itself. Okay, I am going to copy and just bring it over and put it in a new spot. And I need my label no higher or no longer than three inches. So I'm going to go up here and put, it's at 3.073. I'm just going to put it at 3 inches wide. And, and the aspect is locked, so the height will adjust with it. And the height is at 2.16. Let me make sure that's not too much for my bottle. Oh, that'll be just fine. Now from here, I'll send it to my printer and just print it out on a piece of... Uh, copy paper and I'm not going to bother with sending it over to my uh, cameo and cutting it. I'm just going to go cut around it myself. Make this fast. So I'll just go here and I'll print. Hit print. Print again. I want it in my Canon. I'm just going to leave it at the plain paper standard print. That's all good. And now I'm going to print that off on my with my printer, and I'll cut it out. Okay, I did spray my image with two coats of hairspray and let it dry. And now I am going to see where I want it. Right there. Be down just a smidget and I'm going to start putting it on I'm 
do one side and then the other. A little more. Okay. I remembered to get some uh, cellophane. That's different. A little more right in there. Just want to come up. Now for the other side. And now, I think I'm going to go over the whole image and also the bottle itself. I'm getting some bubbles. I didn't use any water. don't have any bleeding on my ink because I sprayed it with hairspray. Now, I'll let that dry, but I'll go ahead and I'll go over the whole bottle with the uh, Mod Podge so it's all the same texture and color. And I'll let that dry. All right, this is all dry, so I'm just gonna take my Jolie Top Coat Brown and I want to go around the label and kind of darken it up some. Maybe around the bottom. This has Mod Podge on it, so it's not going to be, when I wipe it back, it'll be fine. Okay. Okay, I think that's white back just enough. I just go around the edges just a little bit, just to get a little, a little more depth, something on it. I don't know. You never know what you're doing. You just do it. And see how it turns out. Okay. Just kind of pat it back so it's not real dark. Yeah, I'm wondering if it needs it maybe on the half point. Do that. It's gonna go around the bottom some. My brush is not it's not really the right brush. Need to be just a smidget stiffer. Okay, that gives it a little more something. I think that looks better. Now, it needs something else, so I'm going to sit here and think on what I'm going to do with it from here. All right, I just tied a uh, piece of uh, homespun in the black and tan checked on the bottle. And I've cut, I had this little bit of stem of these left. And I've cut them off. So I'm just going to stick those in there. Just for, to give it a little something. Let's see if it needs these. Yeah, they go down a little lower. 
I'm wondering if this one doesn't need to be a little lower. Let's see. Just, no, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it. That's it. It's just simple. Now, I didn't know what else I was going to do, so I went out in the garage and I was looking around, and this is a spindle. I cut it the other day um, in a video where I was making the blue pumpkins out of the two by fours, and I, I cut two of them. I only used one, so I got to looking around. I found this, and I got to looking around, I thought, well, if I could find a good thin piece of wood, this is probably half inch, I could put it up there and make kind of a cutting board. So I have drawn a line, or a, I've curved this off right here. Now, I'm going to take this out, and on my scroll saw, I'm just going to cut this off, and then I'll flip it and repeat the pattern over here. So I'm going to run out to the garage and take care of this and bring it back in and get started on it. All right, I've cut that down and sanded it. And I've decided I want my wax needs stirred really bad. Okay, I'm not going to waste that, so I'll just smear it on there. Just the back side. And I'm going to just cover the whole thing with the wax. Antiquing wax. And then I'll do the front face of it with the Waverly. The Waverly, um, I believe I'll use the Waverly. What is it called? I use it all the time. Plaster. So when I get this finished, I will be back and this needs to dry. And I also want to put it up here. Go ahead and cover this in. All right, this is dry now and I'm going to use a uh, drop cloth by Dixie Bell on just the front. And I'll give this, it, it won't have to have a dark coat or anything. I just need the middle of it light so my image that I'm going to put on it shows up better. A little more crisp and clear. The dark would darken it. I'm going to finish this and let it dry. And then I'm going to put on my image. I'll show you what it is here when I'm ready for it. I'm probably, I'm not going to, I'm going out to the edges, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to distress it after it's finished before I put the image on. Or maybe after, I don't know, we'll see. I'm always saying, I don't know, because I just go with the flow. I really don't know when I start a pot project, if I haven't done it before, which very few unless it's my candles, and I switch that up when I grungy my candles. So I really don't ever know which way they're going to go either. All right, I'm going to finish this up and let it dry. Now, here's the image I'm going to use. I did get it off of Etsy. I'll leave the link below. And it, it's a group of journaling pages. And I believe one reason I picked this out is because I think this is what I used on my rolling pin. And I can't, seems like I used some of, not this particular image, but in that group of images, this was in the file. And I thought, well, if I made this, it would kind of go along with the rolling pin. And I can't remember, but I was thinking I might have used it on my recipe holder that I made, but I, I really can't remember. But anyways, I'm just going to do it on the edges, and I'll sand this off with my finger sander, but I don't want that straight across. So I am going to wet my paper and 
tear of that to where it'll look more natural than being just straight across. And the edges I'll just sand down after I get it put on with the Mod Podge. And I did get parts of my picture wet. <clears throat> Okay, now I'm going to take this and spray it with hairspray so my colors, my ink doesn't run and bleed. And I always say that and I never show you, so I'll show you how I do that. Let me grab my hairspray. I just use a cheap hairspray. I think I got this at the Dollar Tree. It's just the Sauve. And I'll spray one coat on. I'll let that dry and put another coat on. So I'm going to have to wait for this to dry and give it a second coat. All right, this is dry. And I'm ready to put it down. So I'm using Mod Podge. I'll get the top part put down real fast. I don't know how far up I need to go. And now, where's my... I did it again. Put this down. Not seeing any wrinkles so far. Well, right in there's some. And I'll whip this up and I'm going to continue on down and finish putting this on. And then I'll come back. Well, this is dry now and I'm ready to sand down my edges. I'm just going to go straight down. my edges sanded down and now I'm going to coat it with clear wax and I forgot my brushes again my wax brushes all right I need to wipe that back Now I'm going to take my Jolie Brown Wax, which I really don't like this brush, but it is what it is. All right. Okay, that looks good. Now from there, I'm going to have to take this out to the garage and I'll put some wood glue on it and take my brad nailer and put attach the uh, handle onto it. Then I'll come back and I'll put a little something else on it to dress it up. Well, I've gathered up some material and laces and I'm going to try making just a messy bow to go on there. Not a big one. Okay. What next? That there. Okay, use this one. Use this one. Do another one of these. And what else? Try this one.
I don't really know which way to twist that one. This. I don't know if I need anything else or not. Because I don't want it real thick. I think I'll put a thin lace on there. Almost cut that too short. That was getting pretty thick. Tied in a knot. Fluff it out. I have this nailed on and glued, and I didn't heat up my nail gun or my heat gun, my glue gun. Think about right like that. Should have put some more strands of this jute in there. All right, I'm going to wait for my glue gun to heat up. I'm going to fix this and see if there's something I want to get to put in the center or just exactly what else I'm going to do to it. I just wanted to keep it simple and it's something you can set on your counter, you know, lean up against your uh, backsplash. And it looked cute. And it just went out to the garage and found us some scrap wood and saw this laying there and decided that's what I was going to do. All right, I'm going to fi finish this up and I'll leave a picture on how I finish it. But this is the base of it. So I appreciate each and every one of you that like, subscribe, and comment and share my videos. And if you're new here, I'd appreciate you coming back. And until the next one, guys, we'll see you later.